How did you recognize my border? I went to the India-Pakistan border at Bangun. At where? Bangun. The border is not a, a, a defined line. It's a mess of uh, trees and bushes and, and riverine waterfare. And these people who you saw were not refugees from East Pakistan. I can arrange a lot of uh, influx of refugees into Pakistan. If you like to come with me to East Pakistan, I'll show you how they're coming from India. But they're not coming in, nor are my refugees going back to India. You're saying that the people I saw coming with their kitchens and their uh, houses on their heads and, and all their belongings with them were yes. not refugees from Pakistan? No. My impression is, President, that, and it seems to be one that's shared by many other observers who have visited the camps in India, that the Bengalis are leaving because they, are, they feel insecure and because they feel that there is a, a persecution against them by the army which will continue. No. Is, it, is it in your thinking that there should be persecution against these people? I think any government which would like to persecute their own people uh, is, is a nothing but exaggerated lies. Army has persecuted nobody. Army has tried to save 70 million people of East Pakistan against armed rebels of East Pakistan who were excited and incited by a new theory and philosophy of Awami League for secession. The vast majority of Pakistan, in East Pakistan, uh, are, uh, have heaved a sigh of relief that this trend and this movement and this agitation has stopped because of army action. So you're saying, to your knowledge, there has never been, and there is, is not, not now, a selective policy of genocide of any kind in East Pakistan? Most certainly not. The most common criticism against you abroad is that you are out of touch, that you don't know what's going on in East Pakistan. What is your comment on that? Huh. Well, if a head of a state is out of touch with uh, any part of his country, I don't think he has any damn right to remain a head of state. I'm a soldier, basically. And uh, you know, I'm not a politician. I don't want to stick to this job. The moment I find I'm out of touch, out of touch with my people, I shall quit. I'm not out of touch with people. I know East Pakistan like the palm of my hand. I've served there in, in many capacities. I know East Pakistan more than the East Pakistanis know themselves because they haven't got the facilities to move around like I have. So answer to your question is that I'm not out of touch. I know exactly what is happening. And what's more, I have uh, I've visited East Pakistan, I'll continue visiting East Pakistan. And uh, how can, when you say out of touch, I happen to be a head of a state consisting of 120 million people. Well, I don't claim that I, I have gone and talked to every one of those 120 million people. But uh, the personal contact with individuals is not the only means of the head of state knowing what's happening in this country. There's no doubt in your mind that all that's going on there you know about. Absolutely. I uh, saw on my own TV two nights ago a lot of blood flowing in the streets of Ireland. I saw the armed forces going for these civilians, and I saw the civilians going for the armed forces, it made me wonder whether I was uh, watching a scene in Pakistan or somewhere else. I was assured that it was in Ireland. So what do you people talk about army genocide and army repression? The basic fact is that no government worth its name will allow lawlessness. No government worth its name will allow uh, this kind of uh, brutal activities against their own people.